Jean Vansois made his way out of the provisions room, wondering where he could find the equivalent to a stove on this space station. The provisioner was right in a way. Starting a fire on the station would likely be a bad idea, but Jean was too incensed at the time to realise. As he stalked the halls of the space station, he began talking aloud to himself. Alright, so we're on the space station. The aliens don't cook and I can't start a fire either. I need something warm, maybe more hot than warm. What if... They must have some kind of system powering everything in here. Does it use electricity? That'd be a reasonable assumption. We're in space, so we need something to heat and keep us warm. I don't feel any warm air coming from the vents, but there must be something that regulates temperature. Two aliens doing maintenance on a panel turned as Jean-Francois spoke and gave him the strangest look. He realized that he likely looked silly, carrying food around like this while talking to himself, but he was a man on a mission, so damn the optics. Once out of earshot from the human, they whispered to each other. What was that? Never seen that species before. Must be the new one they sent a memo about. Human. They are peculiar. We should probably steer clear of that way. The other nodded, returning to his work. Jean-Francois continued on, looking around the possible rooms and corridors for a location that would have what he needed. Soon, he came upon a sign outside of a door that he didn't recognize. It looked like some kind of reactor. Curious, he went inside. Multiple machines seemed to hum as they did their work. Tubes with glowing liquids went from the machines and into others, forming a complex array all in precious harmony. Higher up on the walls, large panels could be seen holding some computer-looking systems that flashed with a multitude of lights, all with alien text scrolling down displays that appeared to be monitors. A few barriers were also present, surrounding some of the equipment, and Jean-Francois noticed some visual cues that would indicate some kind of hazard but could not decipher the symbols. A loud alien voice spoke to him with some authority behind it. Hey, you can't be in here. Authorized personnel only. Jean-Francois turned to the right and found a frustrated alien. It was slightly shorter than he was, perhaps 140 centimeters tall, and looked like a crossbreed between a jellyfish and a scorpion. A dozen or so tentacle-like appendages dripped down from his head, which was where the stinger would have been, and seemed to behave as arms, while the rest of his body was supported by a large base featuring six legs. Oh, hey, what is this place? You're in engineering, station crew only. Go, we've got things to do here. He figured he might as well ask the alien for some help. Hey, look, quick question. I need some kind of flat metal plate that can radiate heat. I need it to cook my food. It looked at him with some mix of disgust and apprehension. Why would you possibly need that? We don't eat raw food, at least not consistently. Breaking it down by cooking it allows us to more efficiently process the nutrients. It also tastes a hundred times better. The gears were turning in the alien's head, clearly seeing some potential to his idea. Interesting. You must be one of the new arrivals with spark potential. Yeah, we got here a little more than one day ago. What do you mean by spark potential? Your species must know the spark if you were found worthy enough to bring here, no? It is the special gift that can arise from any of us. It lets us expand our horizons, create, invent. Well, that's a long definition for intelligence, thought Jean-Francois. You mean intelligence? No, it's different. Every person aboard this station can be considered intelligent, but not many of them could come up with the concept for this space station, for example, or your idea of cooking. So, like intelligence but different, imagining new concepts, so a bit like creativity. The alien's face lit up with expressive motions at the mention of the word. Yes, the spark. I knew your species must have had a word for it. Very well, let me check if I could provide you with something for your project. Don't touch anything. The alien left before Jean-Francois could continue the interesting conversation he was drawn into. It seemed like creativity was something that was rare, occurring only every so often in other species. They explained the lack of ideas and strategy that were displayed during the class they took, and in some ways, the lack of cooking. This whole academy, then, was merely a tool, or rather an experiment, designed to scout those with creativity in order to hasten their progress. The thought crossed his mind to try and explain that creativity was something inherent in every human, but he wondered how it would be perceived by different alien species. Before he could spend more time on the subject, the alien returned with something for him. This is what we use to heat up sections of the station. You see this little bar on the side? Push it upwards to increase the heat, and downward to lower it. 
Usually we keep the station at 14 degrees Celsius, as is the optimal temperature for most species. Not too hard for those who prefer colder climates, and those who prefer a warm one can simply dress up a bit. Don't use this so much that you change the temperature elsewhere, okay? Well, keep that in mind. It's only for a few minutes at a time. Is this powered by a battery? A good guess, but no. Otherwise everything would need batteries. Instead we use inductive coupling to wirelessly transmit power to every device on the station. Wow, amazing. Say, so, what do you do here? I'm the chief engineer. You can call me Scotty. Now I really need you to go. Jean-Francois thanked Scotty for his help and returned to his room to attempt cooking. At the other end of the station. The Sona was looking forward to a good meal as she left Mr. Florge's class. The first encounter she'd had with these humans was interesting, but her hunger came first. Thankfully, her species received two servings worth twice a day. She picked up her meat, drawing a few sideways stares from the other students, some of embry from the other carnivores, and others of disgust from the herbivores. As she was getting ready to go to her room, she saw the humans leave the class and go in line. She decided to wait to see what they would choose. She'd read that they were omnivores, often seeing mentions of meat and bacon on their internet, but they didn't exactly fit the profile of a species that ate meat. After all, they had no natural weapons to catch prey. She witnessed quite the outrage when they reached the front of the line, one of the humans raising his voice and acting rather hostile. To her surprise, it was the one who seemed so meek when she confronted him that initiated that disagreement. He ended up taking both offerings, and the other three opted for vegetables and fruits. After getting their food, they split up, much to Lasona's confusion. The other three seemed as confused as her, looking around trying to find who knows what. This could be a good chance to approach them, get to know more about them. The humans were talking to each other as she began walking towards them. Spotting her out of the corner of their eyes, they turned to look at the increasingly large shade of red that was getting nearer. Barry was the first to speak up. Hey, is it me or is that big red lizard approaching us? Izumi weighed his observation and corrected him. Lizard? I'd say that's more like a dragon. Wow, a dragon! The Sona was standing upright in full view of them, her red scales glistening under the station's ambient lights. Her scale varies slightly, going from crimson to a lighter shade of red in spots. The scale stopped as they reached the front of her torso, a thick, beige livery material covering her exposed underbelly instead. On her head, a slightly larger horn that the two above her ears stood out between, her two nostrils. Twin wings were kept closed behind her, their tips barely poking out atop her shoulders. They seemed rather small to propel a creature that size into the air, however. Lastly, contrary to mythological dragons from Earth, her neck seemed to be of a more reasonable proportion. Hello, humans. Are you lost? Barry looked at her from the bottom to the top as he replied, taking in all eight feet of her. Oh, we're just wondering where the cafeteria is. Common place where people eat? You won't find that here. You'd traumatize the poor herbivores if you place them next to the carnivores while they ate. Best use your quarters for that. Is eating with others a human thing? Oh, okay. Sort of, I guess. I mean, some people eat alone, but many use lunch as a way to socialize or as a replacement for a meeting. Middle meal of the cycle, interesting. You even have specific words for every time you consume food. If you're going to go eat somewhere together, mind if I also join in? Simultaneously, all three looked at each other with some scepticism, unsure of what to think of that idea. Barry stuttered a bit, but Izumi decided for the group. Well, I suppose so. We should get to learn about our fellow students. Sounds good. Let's go to my room then, offered Barry. Laura and Izumi shot each other a look that said a thousand words. No thanks, let's go to mine, insisted Laura. They made their way, following Laura and drawing quite a few funny looks seeing Lasona follow them. All now present in Laura's room, which she had kept immaculately clean, they began eating. A single large vegetable and what appeared to be a handful of fruit looked all right for consumption and so they dug in, still wishing it was cooked but willing to give it a try. The single vegetable seemed rather dense, packing more weight than its size would normally suggest. With an appearance similar to a large orange potato, they took a small bite, checking for taste and consistency. You know, this kind of reminds me of a cucumber, added Barry. Maybe for texture, but taste-wise it's more acidic, like some kind of tomato, replied Laura. 
Their careful savouring of the alien food was interrupted by loud slurping and chewing noises, turning over to the Sona who had made short work of her meat. It was then that they understood what she had meant earlier by making herbivores uncomfortable. Trying to wash away the gory details from her mind, Izumi broke the ice with a question. So, would you say your species are dragons? Questioned Izumi. Her tongue licks her mouth for all traces of the meat she just ate, making sure she lost none of the flavorful droplets. Her forked tongue seemed to mesmerize Barry, who stopped eating and simply observed her. Hmm. Your word dragon does translate into the specific characteristics that would describe one of us, but it is not our given name, no. We are called Dwai Dun. Izmi continued her line of questioning. How is it, then, that we have descriptions of your species from such a long time before we ever met you? Laura jumped in, also curious by the whole situation. Yeah, what about fire briefing and wealth hoarding? Or the dragon myths? Well, we can't breathe fire for one. We do tend to hoard things. It's a byproduct of something in our brains that makes us want to stay sitting on something in order to prepare us for covering our eggs. The process takes many years, so it's hardwired into us. Before you ask, no, we can't really fly, at least not on most worlds. The gravity and atmosphere has to be just right. I will admit, however, that I am exceedingly curious as to the coincidence of all of this. Nothing in my people's history describes humans, but it's too much of a chance that you just happen to invent why done. I will try and investigate this when I can. I was actually hoping you knew of something that could have helped me a bit. The rest of the meal continued much the same way, sharing small bits of information about the academy in regular conversation. After a few minutes, Lasona's electronic device emitted a small noise. Okay, we should get ready for class. The break period is almost over. All three reached out for their own device, confirming the schedule and the class location. Oh, by the way, a few of us are heading over to the recreation facilities afterwards. Want to join? Added Lasona as she stood up to head for the door. Is it like some kind of sport? Inquired Laura. I guess you could say it's physical activity related, yes. All three looked at each other and smiled. It had been too long since they got to properly stretch. Hey, I wonder if Jean-Francois had time to eat, mentioned Barry offhandedly as they all walked out of Laura's room.